Hello, my name is Alex Cock, Business Consultant at Intercat, and welcome to part 2 of a 3 part quick tip series dealing with some basic visual enhancement capabilities within SOLIDWORKS. For this topic today, we will be talking about visual realism capabilities without going into photo, actual photorealism functionality, meaning PhotoView 360 for the later versions of SOLIDWORKS or PhotoWorks in the older versions. Now, so far, as highlighted in the earlier part of this three-part series, these are the three areas that we will be dealing with in this quick tip series. And for today's session, we will be talking about optimizing the appearances. We have already taken a look at how appearances can be applied. Now we're going to take a bit, uh, take a deeper look into how it can be used to our benefit. Now, topics that we will be talking about today: how do we vary the component appearances with configurations, meaning to make use of uh, appearance state capabilities and we're also going to take a quick look at some of the visual enhancement functionality within SOLIDWORKS itself. Alright, so let's take a look at what we have for today. We're going to start off this portion of our presentation with a sub-assembly that I'm going to make use of. Here's a nice simple gripper and some of you might have seen it. Our emphasis today will be specifically on a component within this sub-assembly here and that would be the main housing. Now this component here right now comes with three configurations, one called default, transparent, the second one and cutaway being the third one. As you can see right now all the three configurations have the same visual properties. We're going to start off here by taking a look at how we can actually create different uh, visual appearances for this part. But before we go on with that, I'd like to just highlight that I'm starting off this presentation with all the visual enhancement functionality in SOLIDWORKS turned off so that we can see what the best uh, outcome will be at the end of the day. In addition to optimize the performance on our graphics card, it's always good to have the uh, minimal graphics enhancement capabilities turned on. So let's start off with the default configuration. First, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn on this link display states to configuration option here. This will allow me to have a different display state being created for each configuration for simplicity. Then up on a display manager, what I'm going to do here is that we just take a look at the default color that has been applied to this component. As you can see from the history, SOLIDWORKS is telling us that the color is a is applied to the entire component main housing here and what we're going to do right now is we're going to overwrite this appearance to start off with. So in the appearance and decals tab let's go on to metal. I like to apply a brush steel appearance by dragging and dropping from the library I get the option to whether apply the appearance to the face feature body that's been selected or the entire component. For this case here, I'm going to attach it to the entire component. Right now, of course, we don't see any change in it. Not a worry. Because in the appearance manager, you'll find that the brush steel material has already been applied. Now let's go back here to the next configuration, which is transparent. Now in transparent, I would like to create a component that allows me to look at the inside of the parts later. So let's go on to texture and I'm going to apply a frosted glass appearance to the entire component again. And finally for the cutaway. Now for my cutaway I'm going to apply appearances both to the components and specific faces. Now this is the reason why I'm working on the part level. If you're working on the assembly level you will not have the ability to apply appearances to specific faces or features. However, I'm on a part level right now and I'll be very easily able to apply this information. Let's apply a setting chrome finish to the entire component but to specific parts here. This for to emphasize the cutaway portions of the part, I'm just going to select I'm going to pre-select this information and go on to apply a painted red. So I do a right mouse click on the appearance and say add appearance to selections. So what I've done here is I've added a few more faces which is what I'm about to show you here 
and do a right mouse click again and add appearance. It doesn't quite really matter here. You can go on to select as many faces at any point in time. And what we've created here is we've created three different appearances for the three configurations. Right. With that done, let's go back to the sub-assembly. And so on our sub-assembly, we also have some predefined configurations. Right now, on my default, we are using the main housing in its default appearance. And let's go on to change it to the transparent. So let's go on to do select this, select transparent. So what we've created here now is we have changed the visual appearance of this component. And for my cutaway, we are using currently the cutaway configuration. So what's the final outcome for this? What we've done here very simply is we have actually created several appearance states for our components and this can be very easily put to good effect. For example, right now I'm just going to flip this down here. I'd like to generally turn off the outline and let's start turning on the rear view graphics and we'll be able to start seeing the enhancements to the visuals that we'll get here right now. And as you can see our components here are relatively light colored so it may not look too good doesn't really matter I'll go on to turn on the shadows first and a bit of perspective to add the realism and of course we find that the background and all is too light and doesn't really highlight the changes in our part here so with a quick flip to our background information let's go on to for example the black refill lights and this is what we get. Nice and simple and we haven't even turned on the photorealistic re rendering capabilities of SOLIDWORKS yet. Now if you're using SOLIDWORKS 2012 you would have an additional option to turn on ambient occlusion which gives you an even greater degree of visual realism. Let's take a look for example at, at this chrome bits of the bolts. If I were to turn on ambient occlusion here you will find that you get an even greater degree of realism. So that's just some of the things you could do with SOLIDWORKS in terms of visual realism even before you go into photorealistic rendering. So from this quick tip we can very quickly recap what we have taken a look at here effectively the control of um, the SOLIDWORKS components with the help of configurations and we've also taken a look at some of the visual realism functionality that's available in SOLIDWORKS. But to just quickly recap what we've effectively done from part 1 to part 2 is to move from this to this. Adding a bit of kick to the visual realism of our models and in part 3 coming up we're going to be taking a look at this. How we add this nice little image onto our models. This is called of course to some of us who are aware already a decal and that's going to be in part 3. But for now as always, for further information or requests on specific topics, questions, please feel free to contact Intercat at the number shown via the internet or through email. My name is Alex Scott, Business Consultant, and this has been a quick tip session proudly brought to you by Intercat. Thank you.